Hi everyone, hello, how are you doing? So welcome to a new chapter, chapter 11, that is Enhan Enhancement and Food Production. Uh, uh, in this chapter, as the name itself suggests, that we are going to talk about uh, improvements in uh, food production. What are the different techniques that are involved in increasing the yield of food production? Uh, due to growing population, uh, there is increase in the demand of food and thereby how to meet those demands. So that uh, the techniques that are involved in increasing the food production, uh, that is what we're going to uh, do uh, study in this chapter. Okay, so in this video, we will mostly be talking about related to the uh, plant um, uh, improvement in the plant food production. So under that, three important topics that we are going to learn is plant breeding tissue culture and micropropagation. Now, tissue culture and micropropagation, we have touched upon the introductory part in the very first chapter, asexual reproduction of uh, uh, lower and higher plants, uh, sexual and asexual reproduction of lower and higher plants. So, any which means we are going to do this in detail over here. Okay, so what is improvement in food production? We all know that food is very, very important for survival of living organisms on planet Earth. So due to increasing population, there is an increase in the demand of uh, food and thereby uh, there is in, uh, de there is a demand for increasing the food production also. So it is something which is very essential and provided to meet the body nutrition requirements. Okay, so... We all know that it contains all these uh, nutrients, proteins, carbohydrates, fast, fats, and the enhancement of the food production will become the primary issue with the increase in population. So how do we tackle this problem with increasing population? How do we increase the agricultural produce? Okay, so there are major efforts that have been done that have, has been, uh, you know, in the past also, various techniques, various measures have been taken to increase food production and it is still going on it will, and it will continue in the future also because of the increasing, increasing population. Okay, so these efforts are being made to meet the requirements, sorry, to meet the requirements of the increasing population, okay, through methods like plant breeding and animal husbandry. So it is not like only plant produce are enhanced for good uh, more food uh, quantity. Uh, also, animal husbandry is uh, parallelly enhanced for uh, those who are uh, non-vegetarians and consume meat also. Okay, so in this video, we will be talking mostly about the plant breeding. Yes, now let's begin with what is a plant breeding. So you have heard about what is breeding, right? Let's say if you have a poultry farm, you breed uh, hens over there, okay, chickens over there. So uh, the eggs are produced and then they are allowed to mature and then more hens are produced from those eggs. So it's like a whole farm is set up, yes. So similarly, plant can also be breeding. Basically, when we talk about plant breeding, it is a method of altering, here we are altering the genetic uh, patterns of the plant to increase their yield. Okay, traditionally XYZ plant is produced is produced and it is produced in so and so amount. But we want more, we want good quality, we want disease resistant um, uh, crop varieties, we want good quality crops, okay. Uh, we want to improve the crop yield, we want the plant to not get susceptible to diseases. So all these uh, parameters are taken into consideration when we are talking about plant breeding, okay. So it is a practice, it is a method in which you are selecting and breeding specific desired plant species to obtain desirable traits. So when we are talking about to obtaining desirable traits, there will be an altering in the genetic pattern of the plants. You are going deep, deep down at the genetic level and you are selecting specific desirable traits of plant species. Why? So that you get more yield, so that uh, those plants are pest resistant easily. They are not infected by any insects or pests. They are any, they are herbicide resistance, etc, etc. Okay, so this is the main purpose of plant breeding. So the main step of plant breeding basically is the hybridization program. You have come across this term uh, many a times. Uh, we have studied it in first chapter also. Hybridization is basically 
main important step in breeding plants what do what do we do in hybridization we uh, use um, uh, greater uh, we use the good quality or the desired uh, traits of a particular plant and uh, we take two uh, let's say we take two uh, different crop varieties and then we merge it we, we we select the desired traits that we want to see in our um, third what you say the gen uh, the, the first generation plants uh, which will have these desirable properties okay so by this method by this hybridization one can create new genetic combinations okay of already existing characters and new genetic variation so you take plant a you take plant b from plant a let's say you you have uh, you require two genetic traits which are very good and from plant b you require one character let's say disease resistant character and you want uh, uh, the characters from plant a and characters from plant b together in your uh, next generation to crops so you combine both the characters by this hybridization technique okay so basically you are uh, exploiting uh, more or less you know to produce a hybrid plant okay so there are various steps into it the first very first step of the hybridization technique is you collect the variability the variable plant what is collection of the variability very very important step wherein you will preserve all the different wild varieties of the species. Wild varieties means what? Species which are naturally occurring in the ecosystem and the environment. Okay. And uh, the relatives of the cultivated species for effective exploitation of naturally available genes in the population. Okay. Means what? You will create a bank or a pool of all these um, wild genes of these wild variety species, all these plants which are naturally uh, occurring in uh, environment in the ecosystem, you will preserve them. You will not let them go extinct or uh, something like that. Okay. So the entire collection is made having all the different, different, different varieties of the alleles or variation, as you say for all the uh, genes in a given crop. It is also known as germplasm collection, okay? Another word, we have discussed, the studied this in first chapter also, something known as germplasm connection, okay? So variations are useful in the selection. So once you have collected all the wild varieties and you have all the possible different alleles of all different, different plants, it becomes easy to select what you desire to see in your, uh, you know, in your first generation plant. So the first step in the hybridization technique is of course collection of the variable species okay so this can be done in either uh, in situ or ex situ setup in situ you can it can be done with the help of the forest in natural uh, reserves and in ex situ you can collect these varieties in form of botanical gardens and maintain them in form of botanical gardens or seed banks etc okay then the next step is um yeah, so this is what I was mentioning. The collection of plants or seeds that contains all the various alleles for all the genes found during a given crop is known as germplasm collection. So you will collect. It's like a, like you have a blood bank. Different all types of blood group will be there in the blood bank. You go to the blood bank, whatever blood group you ask, you will get possibly. Similarly, a bank of all different wild varieties of species is created. Yes. Next step is about evaluation and selection of parents. Okay, now once the bank, once the variably, variability are collected, now the next step is uh, you begin the process by selecting your desired male and female parent. Okay, and these parents should be healthy. They should have a good immune system, very good immune system, vigor. And then they should also show your desirable traits that you want to see in the baby or the first generation plant. Okay, but also they should be complementary features. That is, the male and the female should be compa compatible enough. That is, uh, the desired traits in both the male and the female can be compatible and they come together in your first generation plants. Okay, this is very important step. One of the very important step in hybridization technique. Yes. So the selected parents are then selfed among one another, like uh, in a third chapter we saw selfing of the F1 generation to make them pure and homozygous. Okay, so it is made sure that only pure lines are selected, multiplied and used in the hybridization technique. So this will make sure that you have homozygous uh, traits, homozygous parents, okay, uh, and a pure line is maintained 
you select it, multiply it, and then you use it in the hybridization technique. And the third step is the actual hybridization method. Okay. Uh, what happens in this method is among the selected parents, so you have selected the parents now for the desired characters. Now you will cross them. Okay. Now you will mate each other. What will happen in this? Uh, this combine the characters of both the parents that you are looking for and you will find them in the progeny. Okay. And obviously, this is a kind time consuming and tedious process. You allow the parents, uh, the plants to mate, you cross it, and then you go for the first generation and then second, and how, how much generation you want accordingly. So, this is very simple. Uh, in the first chapter also we talked about emasculation so you select uh, you make one plant female you make another plant male and you uh the pollen grains from the anther of the male parents are collected and then they are artificially dusted over the stigmas of the uh, emasculated flowers of the female parent and then pollination either by agents abiotic agents or by biotic agents are carried out for the cross to happen and then the seed produced they will represent your uh, hybrid uh, seeds or the hybrid generation. The F1 progeny will be your hybrid uh, generation. Okay, so this is the hybridization technique. Finally, uh, then you will, once your hybridization is uh, completed, you will go for the removal, uh, sorry, selection and testing of the superior recombinant. So your all your F1 hy hybrids that you get in the first generation, let's say you've got 100 hybrids in first generation. So from this, you will select the most uh most uh, what you say superior ones the more uh, the, the bestest one you will select and then you can carry out further crosses f2 generation f3 generation uh in whatever number you wish okay and then you finally test and then you release and commercialize your new varieties so these hybrids that you get from f1 you select the most uh good ones and the good ones can be further multiplied and the number can be increased by again crossing by selfing and then you uh, pure uh, you know you test again and then you commercialize it on a broader scale okay so this is the outline of the hybridization technique uh, number one is uh, collection of the variability or from the germ pad, uh, from the germ plasm or the gene bank then you select and evaluate your parents then from that, uh, you select parents with different qualities. Obviously, hybridization is, uh, you know, altering or creating new varieties. So you take a few characters from plant A, few characters from plant B, and some the, something you get in first generation will be a combination of these two plant species. So a new variety is created. Okay, then you sell the parents for three to four generations alone. First, uh, so that you get a homozygous true breeding, then you make uh, parents as male parent and female parent, that is the donor and the recurrent, and then you do the hybridization technique with the help of emasculation technique, okay, by making male and female, and then you carry out the pollination, okay, collection of the pollen grains from the flowers of the male parent, and then removal of the stamen from the flower of the female parent, emasculation. You do artificial cross by using pollen grains collected from the male parent. Either you do bagging, tagging of the emasculated flower of the female parent. Then uh, F1 generation, that is development of fruit and seed representing F1 hybrid generation. Yes. And once you get your F1 hybrids, you select them and you test them uh, whether they have got the desired trait that you were looking for. Uh, let's say you were looking for good uh, number of crops or you were looking for disease resistant trait or you were looking for, uh, what's say, a sweetness in a particular fruit, for example, like that. And then you feel, do, you do field trials for whatever you bought the, for yield productivity and then you test it and release the variety on commercial level okay so this is how the hybridization technique under plant breeding is done so basically for creating new varieties and increasing the uh, crop production uh, you know having the business uh, uh, advantages that we have just mentioned disease resistant pesticide resistant good quality crop uh, healthy and bigger bigger uh, bigger crops all these are uh, kept in mind while doing this technique
okay so many uh, indian hybrid varieties crops are already uh, you know made in the past and they are, have been used they are being used in uh, wheat and then you have rice you have sugarcane also okay uh, various various uh, different different types of new varieties of wheat rice sugarcane millets are produced in india uh, when you look at the textbook you will have all the examples under uh, these uh, crops so you can read the textbook and learn few examples from there they might be asked in exams uh, in mcq format or online format okay yes so also uh, the hybridization technique is basically mostly uh, is uh, the main objective of hybridization technique is to produce disease resistant crops okay you have various bacteria fungi and uh, viruses uh, which affect or which cause deadly diseases in these plants so the whole crop yield is devastated so to protect them you have various varieties new varieties new hybrid varieties of crops which are protected from all sorts of diseases okay so uh, that's the main process, okay? And in all these um, uh, technique, uh, the main technique that is involved is hybridization technique, okay? So I'll just name some of the, um, what do you say, disease resistant plants which are developed in India. For example, in wheat, you have the hemgiri variety, which is resistant to disease like, uh, you know, you have the leaf and stripe brush or the hill burnt leaves, okay? Then you have uh, cauliflower, the variety of cauliflower is Usa Shubra. So cauliflowers, they, they are resistant to diseases uh, like black rot and cold blight back black rot. Uh, so they protect them from any black rot, this new variety of hybrid species. They will not get easily affected by the, uh, uh, by the pathogen, okay? So that's all about plant breeding. Now, next we move to the next topic uh, under plant breeding, which is mutational breeding. Now, what happens in mutational breeding? Uh, basically, in this type of breeding mechanism, uh, you are introducing some sort of mutation, either with the help of physical mutation uh, agent or uh, chemical mutation mutational agents uh, to look for your desired uh, traits like disease resistant or insect resistant plants or uh, you know herbicide resistant crop varieties. So it is also one of the method plant breeding okay uh, what happens in mutation we are all aware that there is a sudden change in the genetic sequence or the nucleotide sequence of the gene okay and this change in the gene can bring about new traits okay to obtain a new traits other than those which are observed in the parent in the traditional parent so mutation can bring about changes of uh, then the changes that are brought about in the particular plant species you can then screen and select uh, the desired um, uh, traits uh, and look for those desired traits in that in those seeds okay so mutation can be either chemical or radiation such as x-ray which can be used to uh, carry out mutational breeding so natural or uh, physical mutagens uh, like uh, the high temperature or high concentration of carbon dioxide or x-rays or UV rays you can use all these uh, physical mutagens which are these mutational agents which can cause uh, changes in the genetic sequence and uh, probably they will give you new traits which you are looking for okay uh, then chemical agents that you can use are like nitric acid ethyl methyl sulfonate mustard gas polka polka chain uh, etc okay which will induce mutations in the crop varieties and uh, then you can look for your desired traits uh, for disease resistant or for any kind of uh, you know uh, uh, trait that will give you good quality crops some of the examples are like you know jagannath variety of rice which is there in your textbook okay np836 variety of wheat uh, which is rust resistance that is uh, the wheat this wheat variety which is produced by mutational breeding it is prevented from any uh, rust uh, you know getting accumulated on the wheat uh, wheat then indoor two variety of cotton, uh, which is resistant to this disease of ballworm, which is produced by mutational breeding. Okay, then you have Regina two variety of uh, cabbage, uh, which is resistant to black rot. Okay, bacterial rot. The this uh, prevents the cabbage from getting uh, infected with this bacteria, and thereby you get good quality cabbage, and uh, it has a longer shelf life. 
case. So this was all about mutational breeding. Now uh, we move to the another type of plant breeding method, which is very, very common uh, uh, and very important. One of the most important technique that is nowadays used in the plant breeding methods, that is tissue culture. Uh, we have touched upon tissue culture in first chapter also. Uh, so just recollecting back what you have uh, studied from the first chapter. Uh, tissue culture, the see, the name itself is telling you that you are culturing, you are producing, you are manufacturing sort of, okay, from the cells and tissues of the plant. So the cells and tissues of the plant itself, they have this property known as totipotency, which gives the ability of any part of the cell which is living uh, to grow into a whole new plant, just like the embryo uh, cells, embryonal cells of uh, any animal. If you take the embryonal cells of the animal and, uh, you know, they have the ability to differentiate into different types of cells and then tissues and all these. Similarly, Plant tissue culture is based on this technique of totipotency, which is an inherent ability of the plant, living plant cell, to you know grow, divide, multiply, redivide, and give rise to a whole new plant. Okay, so what is happening in tissue culture? In tissue culture, you take the tissues or the cells, then you grow it in lab setup, in vitro setup, either in liquid nutrient medium or solid nutrient medium. You give appropriate light, humidity, temperature, solution, nutrients, okay? And then uh, whatever you are expecting from the, uh, you know, uh, the growth from those tissue. So, depending upon what objective you are, for what objective you are do doing tissue culture. Okay. Now, uh, we will begin with the introductory part of the tissue culture. So, basically, it is the defined, it is defined as a capability of developing a whole part from the uh, whole plant from the part of a plant. Okay, so a whole plant can be made or grown from a part of the plant. And this part of the plant is known as explant. It is known as explant. Okay, if you take a small tissue of the leaf or you take a small uh, the cells or you take tissues of the root, etc. And from that you try to grow the whole plant in lab setup. Then that particular plant uh, tissue that you started with is known as explant. Okay. Now, this capacity to form a whole new organism is known as totipotency. Is known as totipotency. I'll just write the spelling of the explant over here. Explant. So, because of this property of totipotency, tissue culture is possible. So the nutrient medium and the growth regulators are all added artificially by, it is all man intervention. Uh, you give hormones like oxygen, cytokinins, everything which is necessary for the growth of the plant uh, artificially in a lab setup. Okay, and uh, this method of producing a large number of plants, so from a single cell or from tissues, you are trying to grow a whole plant and from that plant you can make multiple, so you, let's say you take 10 tissue samples and from 10 tissue samples you can grow 10 whole new plants. So from small, uh, you know, start, st starting tissue, you can create more number of plants. So this is also known as micropropagation. So this method of producing large number of plants in a very short period of time is known as micropropagation. Okay, uh, we will be talking about micropropagation separately after tissue culture. What is happening in tissue culture then? You are producing genetically identical plants. Yes or no? Because you are taking an uh, explant of uh, any, pla any plant and then you are growing the whole plant from that. So it will bear all the characteristics, all the genetical characteristics of the explant, the plant, uh, the part of the plant that you took from a particular species. Okay. So another term can be you are basically generating copies of, the, of that particular selected plant. So clone, you are doing cloning. Okay. Uh, making multiple copies of the plant that you are interested in. Yes, so this is general understanding about tissue culture. Now we move to the basic steps of how a tissue culture is uh, carried out. Okay, how a tissue culture is carried out in brief uh, schematic representation. So the first step in uh, carrying out tissue culture technique is obviously, uh, this is in uh, vitro setup, that is in lab setup. So you will have all sterile grass mesh. Uh, all the materials that are used will be sterile. Sterile means uh, free from any contamination, okay? Free from any contamination. 
So you collect all the sterilized, sterilized uh, glass and sterilized articles. Instrument like oven and autoclave are used for sterilization of the material. Then you select and prepare your nutrient medium. Obviously, you will require nutrition medium, either solid nutrition medium or uh, liquid nutrition medium for your selected tissues to grow. So you, the, the growth uh, of the cells and the tissues will obviously require nutrition. So this medium, one of the most commonly used uh, medium for tissue culture is the MS medium, which is known as Murashige and Skoog medium. These were the scientists who developed and discovered, uh, you know, they prepared this nutritional medium for uh, tissue culture purposes. Okay. Uh, then, uh, so the medium contains how much nutrient in a uh, appropriate concentration all that is uh, there in that particular medium okay then you also sterilize the medium in an autoclave for continuous 10 20 minutes under constant pressure okay you need not remember the numbers over here basically everything which is going to be used in the tissue culture technique you're going to do it under sterile condition even the nutrition nutrient medium which is prepared either solid or liquid uh, it has to undergo sterilization method so once you are uh, starting with the technique, uh, there is uh, no chances of you know contamination because if contamination happens, then let's say either by a bacteria or any kind of fungal spores or any foreign agent, it will uh, take consume the nutrient medium and the growth of bacteria will start happening, and uh, the, you know you cannot go forward with the growth of your uh, tissues. Then preparation of the plant material, that is the explant that you take, you isolate uh, the explant and uh, again you sterilize the explant, you raise it with water and explant is obtained from the growing stock plant. Okay, then once your explant is ready, what you will do, you will insert the explant into the medium. You will insert your explant into the culture medium, either in the flask or a petri dish or test tube, however you want to do it. You will put your explant into the nutrient medium. All this will happen under sterile conditions. Okay, uh, Inoculation is done in the laminar airflow cabinet unit. So this unit basically provides sterile condition, wherein there is no uh, chances of any contamination uh, by any bacterial spore or fungal spore or anything uh, like that. Okay. Once you have inoculated, means you have introduced the explant into the nutrient medium, you let it incubate. You, you, uh, you let that uh, explant to start growing in the nutrition medium by consuming the nutrient. Okay, So here the cells of the explants will grow, they will multiply, they will divide, multiply and uh, a, 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 a structure will be formed undifferentiated mass of cells known as callus okay so something known as callus that is you take the small tissue you put it the explant you put it into the nutrient medium you keep it for two to three weeks for example and during this time period <coughs> the cells are multiplying growing and a ball of mass of cells uh, which are known as which is known as callus is formed okay now you will take the callus Okay, uh, if you maintain, if, if callus is to be maintained for a longer period of time, then it is divided into three, four segments. And then you can uh, transfer small, small parts of the callus into different, different uh, setup, into different fresh culture medium. So let's say four uh, flask. Okay, then this callus leads to organogenesis. Now you allow the callus to grow in the nutrient medium. This callus will, will further differentiate into organs like the root system and the shoot system, etc. etc. So organogenesis is basically what? Initiation of rooting and shooting. Basically, the root system will start growing, the stem, the shoot system will start growing and that eventually will lead to plantlet formation. So a small plant will be developed in the glass or the test tube in whatever setup you are doing. And then hardening will take place, that is the plantlets. Now, once they reach to a significant height, you will remove it from the flask for the test tube and then you transfer it to the bigger size vessel, either polythene bags or a small uh, pot with soil, something like that, wherein you provide all the light, required light, required humidity, required temperature, required uh, nutrients, etc. for a suitable period of time. Once they reach a significant height, uh, and then you transfer it to the fields. Okay, so this is how the tissue culture technique takes place. This is the broader uh, schematic representation of the tissue culture. 
okay so this leads to something known as micro propagation what are you doing you are making multiple identical copies genetical identical copies clones of this uh, plant okay so it is also known as clonal propagation what is uh, the benefit of this micro propagation to tissue culture you get multiple plants rapid multiplication of plant in a very short period of time and also very small space is required short period of time and short space is required okay a large number of plantlets can be obtained in short time and short uh, space small space so plants you can do it throughout the year under controlled lab conditions yes independent of season so this uh, removes the season can uh, season uh, you know requirability that certain plants are produced in certain seasons because of the advancement you can control the environment in the lab setup and you get multiple copies of your desired uh, crops okay so genetically similar plants which are known as clones are produced by this method so if you want multiple copies of a particular plant you can go with micro propagation uh, using tissue culture technique so desirable characters and desired sets of superior variety they can be preserved and they can be maintained by carrying out uh, tissue culture and micro propagation okay so they can be kept constant for many generation uh, this is very helpful major advantage of this clonal propagation is maintaining or preserving rare plant species some medicinal plant species okay some endangered species of the plants so they are multiplied and kept for uh, future use okay so that's all with regards to plant breeding yes uh go through the topics from a textbook also once again and if you have any difficulty you can reach out to me thank you take care keep revising bye bye